dot product of geometric vectors. Well, in this video, we'll try to understand, after all, what is a dot product? So that is the basic question which we need to understand. And then we'll explore dot product in this set of videos. Now, we have this expression here which says vector A dot vector B is equal to magnitude of vector A times magnitude of vector B times cos theta. So that is the way you have to calculate the dot product of any two vectors. So it is basically product of magnitudes along with product of cosine of angle between them. Theta is the angle between the two vectors A and B and theta should be between 0 and 180 degrees. So that is what the angle should be taken as, right? Now let's kind of explore this and figure out what is after all dot product, right? So we'll just take random, right? Like let's say this is my vector A. So whenever we have two vectors, it's a good idea to draw one as horizontal, right? And the other one could be anywhere, right? So let's say vector B, right? Let's say this is my vector B. So we are just showing two vectors here so that we can do some discussion thereafter. Now, so we have vector A here and this is my vector B and angle between them at present, let us say this is angle theta. So what we are saying is that A dot B, A vector A dot vector B is equal to magnitude of vector A times magnitude of vector B times cos of theta. So that is the expression for dot product. So whenever in a problem you have to solve dot product, just multiply the magnitudes along with cosine of angle between them, get the result. Now, on the left side, we have two vectors. Do you see that? A and B, both are vectors. On the right side, what do we have? Magnitude, magnitude, and this is also a scalar number, right? Cosine of anything will be a number. So what we have here is a scalar quantity. Do you see that? So what we realize here is that dot product is actually yielding or converting vectors to scalars in a way, right? So, okay. So the result of dot product is what? Result of dot product is what? Is always a scalar. So that's one point which we notice right there, right? Second, I should write that should have been the first point is when we are saying dot product, it is product of two vectors. Do you understand? So basically it is product of two vectors. Both should be vectors if you want to do dot product between them. Otherwise, it's not valid. Dot product is not valid if both are not vectors. That is kind of important thing which we need to understand here. And second what we do is that their product is always scalar. Now, whenever we are given vectors, vectors, especially the geometric vectors, they can be represented anywhere, right? They are called free vectors. So how do we find dot product? So geometrically, what we do is we place them tail to tail like I've shown here, right? Vector A could be here, B could be written somewhere there. But when you're trying to find vector, then the angle between them which you are trying to find is place them tail to tail and then the angle between them is calculated, right? So when you want to find dot product, what you should do is place them tail to tail, right? So they should be placed tail to tail. I am discussing all these fine intricacies so that right in the very beginning you understand what all we are trying to do, right? Now, let's understand few scenarios. Scenarios are this angle theta. This could be 0, this could be 90, this could be 180, this could be more than that. Well, we have a restriction here. It says theta should be between 0 and 180 degrees. Well, really speaking, that restriction is not there. Uh, why? Uh, it is not there because, think about it like this. What is, let's say this angle is 60 degrees, right? Let us say the angle is 60 degrees. So let's say cos of 60 degrees. 
then what is going to be the angle if I do it like like from here so that will be more than 180 right so we are trying to discourage you to take the other side of the angle do you understand we don't want you to take angles which are like not primary angles right that is the whole idea why are we putting this restriction strictly speaking even if you place an angle which is bigger than 360 degrees you should get the same answer cosine is even function let's understand cosine now cosine is even function right and in cos cos of minus theta is actually equals to cos of theta right cos of minus theta is actually equals to cos of theta right so remember that part so at times when you do the minus angle also you will get the same result okay but it is kind of important for you to always take angle between 0 to 180 degrees right for example if I have let me sketch one here itself if I sketch my diagram kind of like this where two vectors are like this right in that case the angle should be taken as this one not this one that is what we are trying to say here right assume that this angle is 120 let us assume for the time being this angle is 120 degrees right now what will be that angle that angle will be 360 minus 120 right correct so 360 minus 120 will be let's do 360 minus 120 so we'll get an angle of 240 degrees 360 minus theta but as you can see what is cos of 360 minus theta cos of 360 minus theta actually is equals to cos of theta going back to the basics right cos of 360 minus theta is cos of theta therefore even if you take the other angle you will get the same result that's what I'm trying to say the whole thing is that you should not take the angle that's what we're trying to emphasize here right so that is why we write this restriction right in the definition right but it is not really a compulsory thing to write that's what I feel and so I'm sharing this with you now so that is the aspect on that thing now let's look into this angle what happens if the angle now let me extend this and make kind of a coordinate system here so we have this coordinate plane now see the two vectors in this if vector B is in this place then cosine will be negative if vector B is in this place cosine will be negative do you understand that means and now we are talking only about angles between 0 and 180 to simplify our case we should write if theta is less than 90 degrees or we will say less than 90 degrees then dot product will be then a dot b will be actually positive do you see that we will get a positive result but if theta is greater than 90 degrees right and of course less than 180 since that is our restriction right then a dot b is what a dot b will be negative since it will be in quadrant 2 do you understand so it will be negative but how about theta equals to 90 degrees in that case whatever a and b may be cos of 90 is what zero so we'll get zero so that means if there are two products which are orthogonal if there are two vectors which are orthogonal for example if we have a vector like this and another one like this as is the case in axis our basis vector i and j dot product of those vectors will always be zero since they are at right angles cos 90 is zero so this is kind of very very important thing which we learn here another thing which you will notice is how about both are same vectors right that is let me write like this a dot a right in that case it will be magnitude of a times magnitude of a times cos of zero degrees right since both are same vectors cos zero is one so we will get magnitude of a square 
this is a very important so we get a magnitude of a square that is what we get always so when you multiply when you have I should not use the word multiply when you have dot product why should I not use multiply because we have dot product and a cross product also which you'll soon learn right so at present we are discussing dot product so we'll leave multiplication for scalar multiplication correct so whenever product it will be dot or cross multiplication scalar multiplication remember that so dot product of two same vectors will give magnitude square of the vector right that is very interesting and it is kind of a law right now if you have dot product of two vectors which are in opposite direction that means kind of let me write dot product of minus right then what do you get then it is dot product product and cos of 180 degrees now cos of 180 degrees is negative so you get negative of magnitude square this is kind of critical right if they are in the opposite direction you actually get negative of their magnitude square right it's still a square of the magnitude but negative value so does it make it vector <laughs> this is very interesting it doesn't really make it vector think about it like this a number line right so number line has a zero in between correct and on this side we have positive values and on this side we have negative values but all are real numbers they are just numbers scalars right so think dot product as scalars right so the result is product is a scalar that means it belongs to set of real numbers always correct which could be positive or negative so don't get confused with negative answers as kind of vectors right it is not a direction this is what I want to highlight about dot products before really getting into them right I think you got a lot of information about it now from here onwards we'll move on to geometric vectors and coordinate system use algebraic vectors so we'll get into these things from here onwards so first we'll explore dot product of geometric vectors and then move on with algebraic calculations I hope you find it very interesting and understand this concept because we are going to apply dot product in many places for example work done work done is application of dot product work done is force dot distance work done is scalar units are joules Newton meter or joules right so that is an application of dot product which we will see hope you have a very interesting time watching these videos thank you and all the best